the new system that I believe these forces wishes to bring in, the old system has to be killed first. People are inert. People don't move. They don't want to change behavior. So the way you get them off the old donkey onto the new flash financial system or the monorail, if you want to kill the iron horse, uh, you need to you need to create a crisis on the old system. That way you force everybody into it. And you probably need quite a bit of suffrage and pain financially for them to sign any terms you're going to put in front of them. Hi, I'm Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, and this is the Miles Franklin Weekly Special for the week of September 13th through September 20th, 2022. This week we're highlighting some of the most exceptional 10-ounce silver bars in existence. Made by the Valcambi Mint in Switzerland, these 3 9 fine bars are cast, not pressed, have a unique graduated rectangle shape, and carry an individual serial number. Best of all, they're available at only $3.59 over spot. We also feature this week what are likely to be some of the last coins to bear the portrait of Queen Elizabeth II, the 2022 Silver Britannia and Silver Maple. The Silver Britannia is made by the Royal Mint in London, is 3 nines fine and available for $5.25 over spot, while supplies last. The Silver Maple is made by the Royal Canadian Mint, is 4 nines fine and available for $6 over spot, again, while supplies last. All our specials this week are IRA eligible. And if you have an IRA that's holding stocks, bonds, and a dollar subject to runaway inflation, well, you'd rather have it holding precious metals? Call us, and we'll be happy to help you in that process. Call us today, tonight, or even after hours and weekends at 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And with us today, a new guest, Francis Hunt from The Market Sniper. Francis, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really delighted to be here and thank you for the invitation, Elijah. Well, it's great to have you. And what we're seeing right now in the precious metal markets, if we could start with that, is kind of perplexing to a lot of people because the fundamentals seem to be better than ever. We're seeing you know, inflation, still high inflation, uh, for August, and we're seeing you know pretty much the highest we've seen for 40 years. Inflation is cooling off just a little bit, but not dramatically here. Um, but we're seeing gold at it seems like new lows and at critical levels where we could see a dramatic washout in the price of at least paper gold. Your perspective on the metals markets right now? Uh, I think that was an excellent opening summary uh, that you provided there, Elijah, with reference to the key level of significance that is really prominent right now and on a lot of people's minds. Um, and that's the 1680 level that we are pretty much in and around at the moment. Um, so again, to qualify, this is the paper metals market that we're talking about. Uh, it's not actually what it costs to uh, secure an ounce. Uh, of gold once you when you procure physically and i expect that there could be some downside possibilities here on the paper price short run on account of the perceptions of where we're going uh, in terms of the the macroeconomics so uh, the uh, the fed tightening has definitely turned the dollar into a bit of a weaponized wrecking ball uh, not just the military industrial complex is a weapon but actually geopolitically the dominance of the dollar, uh, it's a potential geopolitical weapon too. Uh, and it's been used in its own sense of a weapon. So this isn't just an in fight about inflation. The inflation is the great cover story. They certainly let it get out of hand. They were certainly too late to respond. Um, and now that they're electing to be vigilant on that, they have stored up an, an arrears that has allowed this fire to be a burnout fire. So they have to take all the water from everybody else to go ahead and uh, deal with this uh, event that's essentially been a central bank creation. And, and as a result of that, uh, the dominance, the short and medium term dominance is of a dollar nature and a very recessional stroke. We don't do normal recessions anymore, depressional potential nature, uh, particularly for the rest of the world that has to contract in dollars. Uh, as I think somebody was saying, 8% of all trades directly with America. It sounded like a bit of a low number. I haven't fact-checked this, so this is just a repeat of a conversation I was listening into, but 60% of the transactions are still done in the dollar. So even if that initial number is slightly unders, which it sounded at the time, um, you're still talking about a lot of people that are not doing business specifically between uh, with America and between each other, but are still obliged to use the dollar. That is, of course, 
being challenged now. We all know of all uh, the initiatives that are in play. And one of the key things that uh, the Fed might do, as well as on the surface fighting inflation, is also to attempt to protect its dominance. And uh, the way you do that is you beat your chest, uh, silverback uh, orangutan in the troop, and you assert yourself over any other potential uh, new uh, challenges. And in an essence, I think we're seeing that play out. And this is having an effect on paper gold prices. It does seem like we're seeing a drop right now in paper gold prices. If you could maybe share with our viewers kind of the critical levels we're at right now. I know you have some uh, charts to share here. Absolutely. Thank you for bringing me in on that because an image is as, uh, you know, as vivid as a, um, as a thousand words in many senses. So people will be familiar with a paper gold uh, price uh, over this. I am on a weekly chart at the moment, um, but I, I want to, uh, I will drop change timeframes a little bit. I want to highlight how the 1680 became to be very, very key. So there was a period here, these green lines that I've drawn, that this was a bit of a, a what we sometimes call, we nickname as a squeezy, squeezy Japanesey, uh, especially as we've been talking a lot about the yen. But this is essentially a volatility uh, contraction. And there was a final little falling wedge. And we were fortunate enough to get long on the dollar gold uh, in the breakout of this wedge, which was a fractal of a setup within the larger setup that you saw here that was to be the gold move. And in actual fact, it was one half of a commodity trade. We went exceedingly short oil, long gold, so that we were kind of commodity neutral. This coincided with uh, the events that led up to March 2020, where we actually got single digit oil, which was one of our uh, big macro calls. So the two kind of went hand in hand because we were trading them uh, because it gave us a kind of dollar neutrality if, uh, if there was any form of dollar dominance. What you then found uh, going up uh, here is that when we got to the events of March 2020, that's over here, and I'm going to just reduce the time frame slightly so we can just focus on that lead up to the orange line that I've drawn there. But I just wanted to give you the context of why we squeezed, why we broke first. So if we go to something that more like a three day uh, time frame and just capture the most recent events since the 1680 level, you'll see that when the events of COVID occurred, we first got tapped out over here. We pulled back. So I'll just illuminate that again with the pink line. Tapped out, pulled back. A little bit of uh, a dip. Then we returned there. Then the lockdowns came. This was the worst of the news. Then we rallied back up and had another pullback. You kind of had uh, this structure. And then we blew up and through that 1680 level. So all that time, you had 1680 serve as a resistance point once, twice, uh, three times. And then you blew up and then support for the flag that was sitting on top. So this showed the relevance of the 1680 level over here. So you've had that uh, re a reversion from being an active resistance to a bull uh, flag support point that then saw us uh, finish a very, very productive move for gold that we've since been in gestations or, uh, since. Now, we actually had great setups. We got out very close to the top on the pound and the euro. There was more interesting technical setups, which also shows that the dollar has been part of the story. It's not just about gold. Sometimes we forget as a futures trader, I'm used to trading pairs. It's always about, you know, trade the one you think that's going to be the strongest against the one that's the weakest and where you have the setup. And in gold, sometimes we just think of the price of gold without remembering that there's a dollar story behind here. Um, so the dollar. Then I had uh, a lengthy period of where it began to gain some strength, and we've had this protracted delay. We've ended up with a kind of, in a very simplistic sense, a sort of M structure where the 1680 has been the floor. And you can see again how you actually had a double bottom here. Uh, you were supported this time, and on a double bottom, you would normally have a neckline up top there, and you'd get a projection around there, and that was made. So you bounced and got your rally there. Uh, and you had another period where we've kissed it over here and we got a, a weak rally, but we couldn't really get away and we've been sucked back down. So I want to highlight that this is actually bad momentum on the paper gold price at the moment. This move from down uh, around about the similar high, double top, as we would call it, that's the M formation down to here, was actually more abrupt in its nature of its momentum than the previous move. And when you take the blow up to the upside, that was more abrupt to the upside than the subsequent rally. So even your rallies are softer and your sell-offs are coming in harder. 
So I'm not going to be singing um, what everybody wants to hear from me. Uh, I will always tell you exactly how I see it. But this is uh, a malaise, I think, that is going to be affecting many deemed risk on assets. And gold is very unique. It's not just a risk on, uh, I don't refer to it as a risk on asset. I consider it real money, everything else currency. But the concern we have here is equities are going to probably enter into a second stage of sell-off. I certainly am very bearish right now, short term, the cryptos, I'm expecting continuation. So this isn't just me sounding like I'm hating on a dollar. It's telling me what I see dispassionately, technically for the paper-based price. As a metals holder myself, and as someone who would exploit any of the sell-off potential here to acquire, although, um, as I mentioned, premiums will probably stretch, so you won't get the full discount of any reduction in the paper price, and deliveries may indeed uh, shorten even further. So the overall, if you just look at this technically, we've got possibilities of even a 1360 and running below. That sounds very far off. Many people go, what, what, what? We were at 2000. How can you say that? I'm afraid I just think the scale does make this possible for uh, the paper price. You are getting a little bit of a bit, uh, rally here, but I'll also show you the silver market, uh, Elijah, and this is a bit of a long form answer, but technicals are that way, just to make the case many times over. We had a similar level that was support at the $22 mark. Um, and I want to highlight that we've already bled through that. Um, now, just because you get a double top, as we showed you on the gold, doesn't mean it has to perform to target. And it doesn't mean I'm saying that's an absolute outcome. It just means it's a foreboding. It's a dark shadow over the, the prices. We may have somewhat of a bad uh, you know, recession, but it may not be brutal. I'm unfortunately on the slightly more, it's going to be big and possibly bigger than we've seen in a, uh, even with the March 2020 events. But that doesn't mean I'll be right. Uh, that's my primary bias scenario. You can see the multiple interludes uh, here with the 22 level and each time failing to get to a new higher point. So that was your highest high. That was a lower high and that was a lower high. And then we let go of it. And as is typical when you run a key level, you get a rally back, a return move. And now we are, now we are down. Um, that all said, there's some encouragement in that the, the gold-silver ratio is is, is, is that really the third worst level that we've ever had it at? Um, and it's typically a buy signal, but that is a very long-term buy signal and it takes a while before that comes good. So now that I've disappointed a lot of your audience, maybe a little bit, let me cheer them up in that in the long term, it's my assessment that there's some uh, better news to follow. So if I'll just pull up and divide by the silver futures here as well. Uh, and we'll get the long-term gold-silver ratio on this as well. On the monthly, I've drawn the modern error and uh, two key significant levels of 30 times on the uh, gold-silver ratio and 90 times. And you can see the two orange boxes. Pull a bit more of this history on. Um, this is captures quite a, an extended period since the last major bull of the 80s you'll see we were as low as 16.5, the blue box. So that's cold ratio. It's a very good buy. For, uh, it's a very good get out of silver, uh, swap it for land, other assets moment. So silver was very high. And of course, gold was very high there. You're at $800 back then. Uh, and a dollar bought you a lot more back then than it does today. Then the 102 was a very good buy point and entry into the, the precious metals market. But you didn't get a brutal uh, adjustment. You got a pretty consistent adjustment. Then we had a bit of a rally, and then we only got down to the 30.5. That was the 2011 high. So that's uh, that's been a, a good entry generally. I don't think we were allowed the full bull market in that one. Uh, we should have gone below that. So there was a, a truncated bull, in essence, is what I'm highlighting. Then the events of March 2020 took us to an all-time high in the gold silver, and this was an excellent time to be getting into precious metals generally, and moreover, particularly uh, silver, but gold did exceedingly well. And that captured that 2000 run from around uh, $1,300. We've had a, a part coming out of this rising wedge. We've, we've smashed out of it, but we've had a return move. This is only the third time now that we've registered 90s in the gold-silver ratio, above 90, and we touched 97.4. So it was not as extreme as the COVID events, but it's pretty extreme. Now we are pulling back. What we're actually seeing a little bit of overperformance um, 
of silver relative to gold. So then neither of them are doing great, but normally silver gets worse hit. So you could see uh, something essence of a bullishness here. We could both see both go down, but this time silver is not going down as the higher beta. In other words, in percentage terms, uh, larger. So we could have a period where they go down and this continues to adjust downward, but then they both turn and start going up and we have the move. And I think if we have the fullness of the, the potential move, we will go sub 30 and potentially even below double digits on the gold silver ratio. So uh, I've given you a very long form technical answer there. So I want to uh, zip it up a bit and let you just respond on top of that. But silver has let go of its key level of significance to expect the possibility that the paper price of gold would do similarly. I don't think is, uh, as, is as big a shout as it might sound out. So it definitely does seem like uh, lower gold and silver, uh, lower gold and silver prices to come most likely, at least for the paper market. Can you expand on your view? Uh, what differentiates the physical versus the paper market in these circumstances? As part of your answer as to regarding the paper versus the physical article, um, we, we were recently, and we'll provide you a link to refer to that, quoted in the Asia markets um, news regarding uh, the potential for an astounding uh, revelation of full level of gold reserves by uh, China. Uh, they've been keeping their cards pretty close on their chest, and most people are well aware that they are the biggest producer and they're also the biggest importer. Uh, but I think they will still manage to overshoot shock people in terms of what's gone on. So what's that got to do with the question you asked regarding um, paper markets and physical markets? When you look at the charts and you divide, you split the current gold price over the last four decades or even five decades back, back from the last bull, back in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s to today. When you look at uh, the charts and you chart them by Asian session, by uh, US stroke London bullion market session, and you split the charts, what you actually get is on uh, the Western let's call it Western, which captures the LBMA and the New York session, an actual uh, chart that is going down, despite the fact that gold is substantially higher than the $800 peak of the late 80s. And what you get on the Asian session is exceedingly uh, parabolic. And the true gold is the summation of the two of those, which is a, a reasonable climbing chart from uh, the, that period to where we are today. Um, so in actual fact, there's two markets for gold. Uh, there's one where there's physical delivery probably taking place uh, and the gold is moving from west to east, in my opinion, through open market operations. And it's almost as if, given the fact that we have hyper overvaluated debt, and this is speculation on my behalf, So, but just applying key logic, we have a hyper overvaluation of debt. Anything that is proliferated to a huge level should not command high value and is paying such a low yield. Yet somehow we have a highly overvalued debt system, which is essentially how we've created all the liquidity and the money. Yet in another scale, we have a highly suppressed, uh, certainly on the Western half of the pricing of the market and price discovery mechanism, uh, a, a collapsing gold market and a, on a commodity that has unique properties uh, broadly only found at a rate of about 1.1% per annum. That does vary per year. I haven't seen the latest numbers per year, but is a, is a, is a very low proliferation uh, uh, article with extreme value and has historical significance, probably going well beyond the 3,000 years we give credit for it, uh, even beyond. So overall, uh, my, my assessment is there is a transfer of wealth. Somebody is holding a debt that is overvalued, and the compensation thereby is a discount window to accumulate something that will always retain value. And we are actually seeing this suppression and holding up. So whenever you hold something up, whenever you suppress an urge, it comes out somewhere else. Uh, in any system, whenever you create a fake uh, force in one area, it will, uh, if you try to hold a peg, for example, in currencies, eventually you will start to build up. If you build a wall on the beach, 
your sand will stack up against it and eventually it does get washed away. Um, and this is in essence what we have. We haven't had true price discovery in my assessment on true physical uh, silver and uh, precious metals for an extended period. We have become so used to it that it just sounds like something we all repeat. And what has benefited at the expense of the true price discovery of precious metals is uh, artificially inflated and held up. And we have a very clear example of that in the Japanese scenario where they are actively doing yield curve control. Uh, we have an environment where everybody is having inflation and you're still paying 0.24% on a, a Japanese bond. Uh, how can that be? Well, that's a guaranteed negative loss. They are printing currency and they are actually monetizing and buying up that very asset to support it for their pensioner class and everything else. So it's quite clear that this not only does happen, it is actively being practiced, but that there is also a physical moving from one side of the world to the other. And I think it was Kissinger that said the future lies in the in the east and the and the money is moving uh, east uh, west to east. And to me, that translates into the gold is moving from west to east. So it seems like what you're saying is that there's this suppression of the price in the West and the East is just buying all the gold essentially because of that. Is that is that what you're saying? Uh, it's, it's a potential. Uh, it's my speculation given the the and this is three or four decades, by the way. So this is not a random, a small sample case. This is over an extended period. You have a totally different behavior of price behavior for multi-decades on a single item that is universal and standard the world over. So one people are devaluing it and others can't get enough of it. Uh, so what does that tell you? Well, there's no true price discovery because there's different valuations on it. And so you have to ask, either we don't value gold in the West and the East do, uh, or the East are just crazy and they're hypervaluing a crazy rock and we can't just offload enough of it. Uh, somebody's wrong, and the physical will be transferring to reflect that sense of appreciation. So money flows where it's appreciated most, where it's looked after most, and it flows away from people that don't care for it. Uh, and in the case of money being gold, I would say that is also uh, occurring right here, flow from west to east. Now, in this environment where we're seeing this distortion in the metals prices because of what might be occurring, as you mentioned, uh, how do people play that? I know we can't give personalized financial advice, but how do people invest accordingly if there is that distortion in the markets? Well, you have to come to a conclusion about which side of the hemispheres are right, the West or the East. I've already placed my bets uh, on uh, my take on that. Um, we are the most financially engineered, London, uh, the, you know, America uh, and the Europeans in terms of debt and their situation. We are the most financially engineered. Actually, some people would say that's no longer correct. Japan is, is very high, uh, but they don't have, the, uh, America hasn't put their unfunded liabilities on the books that would push them through 600%, according to a Boston professor. Uh, and that was some time ago, he said that. I think it's a lot worse. That was pre-COVID. Um, so in actual fact, you have the benefit of um, global currency units, which when that is no longer in play, you, we are probably the most financially engineered uh, and over leveraged. And uh, China has done a lot of damage in that space as well from during the COVID, uh, my apologies, the great financial crisis from 08 to uh, 16. But the difference will be that they will probably hold a lot of gold and the price and the value that will be placed on their gold, um, given that they'll be probably the single biggest holder, uh, could serve as an immense uh, buffer against that debt. But we are certainly going to go through some form of problem reaction solution. And this is my biggest frustration, Elijah, with many people, is that for the new system that I believe these forces wishes to bring in, the old system has to be killed first. And it's quite a stubborn old donkey. It's not so. It's not doing so great with all that we've all the debt we've loaded it on its back. But it isn't yet dropping dead. And there seems to me like active participants are actually doing their damnedest to, to slit its throat, so that they can then create the in, people are inert. People don't move. They don't want to change behavior. So the way you get them off the old donkey onto the new flash financial system or the monorail, if we want to kill the iron horse. Uh, you need to you need to create a crisis on the old system. That way, you force everybody 
into it. And you probably need quite a bit of suffrage and pain financially for them to sign any terms you're going to put in front of them. And this means we're going to have a gun put to our head in some financial form in terms of old system depends, massive amount of supply chain issues. I talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. People should be prepping on more fundamental basis, which is the pyramid of needs just that involve shelter, that involve uh, aspects surrounding food supply uh, and various other things that we take for granted uh, because such will be the problem. And they need such a vast reaction to that problem that you will accept any new solution. And uh, I feel we're going into a surveillance finance era uh, and the central bank digital tokens that they wish to bring in um, require a lot of pressure on us to accept. Uh, And that means I'm foreboding a little bit of what the short term is. But if you have made preparation, you bought physical gold, you have got it in multiple jurisdictions and it's, uh, it's not with a bank or a, uh, or a traditionally governmental controlled or easily accessed by government uh, vaulting service, you could be in a far better position than the rest of your peers. So just by doing relatively well relative to the rest of your peers could be a real wealth um, transforming uh, event. And I consider gold the magic arch that takes you from the old iron horse to rail train that's going to be pushed over a cliff and the railway destroyed onto the monorail. It's going to bring your wealth over with you, while most people who don't participate in this process will not have that. They will have, they will see paper-based assets go to zero. We could have debt forgiveness. The extremity of what's possible, and I prefer to p- prepare for an Armageddon scenario, even if most of what I think might happen doesn't happen, because then you are protected to your utmost. So it helps to set a low bar. I'm an optimist at heart. I'm not here to make uh, people miserable. But the full preparedness of which physically held gold by yourself or access through, I would say, non-traditional holders for you that won't be overly influenced by government will see you carry your wealth over and expect a major re-rating. I don't think in the current system, Elijah, that we'll actually see a paper price of gold trade to its true full value. In other words, that system will end and the re-rating occurs almost like the $20 to $35 occurred. There wasn't a $21, $22, $23. We didn't trade our way up to $35. It just closed. You don't own it anymore. You're not allowed to own it anymore. Oh, by the way, it's now valued there. Something that's, I'm not saying it will be in the same manner, but that lockstep that you just don't trade to there, it just comes back in. Only instead of being something that goes up from 20 to 35, the scale of our malfeasance in terms of leverage will make that look like a, a rounding error in terms of what it is. And that should be very positive news for people that are investing in physical uh, and silver. And any discount window that sees a collapse and recessionary stroke depressionary behavior in the price should be exploited. And if you are taking cash, you, you're holding money out the system, beware bank hacks, beware all sorts of things you've never heard or thought it would happen before. You've taken enough wealth out the system that can't be taken off, so not too much digitized wealth. You will be in a very powerful position to make use of the discount window yourself, but expect premiums to be high, expect delivery times to be uh, long, um, but it will be a great opportunity. And then you will be in one of the best positions for whatever new system is being planned for us. Now, our channel, Liberty and Finance, the reason behind that name is, you know, protect your finance and your liberty. And I think, as you mentioned, if we do go into this new system, it's important to be fortified financially so that we don't just accept anything that's next so we can retain our liberty. Um, Are there any other pitfalls? You mentioned, you know, how a lot of financial assets are going to fall. You know, there's so much debt out there and that will probably uh, be reduced in value as well, if not completely wiped away. So are there any other pitfalls that people should be looking at right now um, to make sure, you know, not to be devastated financially if this reset is to occur? When you have pure panic and you have your base needs not sought after, that is food, shelter uh, and security, which while that the bottom layer, essentially nothing else matters. So your investment in Bitcoin, your investment in XYZ stock, um, none of that is important anymore. You can't say, but my dear wife, I'm sorry the children can't eat, but we can't sell our Apple shares, our Tesla shares, especially at this price. What happens is you get into what I call the forced 
seller. It's no longer even about whatever the price is. You just need any kind of money. And most people are forced sellers, and they usually those usually occur very, very deep down at bottoms, in approaching and near bottoms. Those that haven't prepared become forced sellers when things they never visualized could happen have suddenly happened. Don't forget, we've had some really big sigma events from the great financial crisis, the dot-com, and of course, the recent events of March 2020. Imagine you got all of those type events simultaneously in one big outing. That is the death blow for the financial system. If you are happily prepared for that, and it's not money left in a bank, you have a higher reserve of cash notes because dollar will be king during the fear period, and it's still accepted money. So uh, having your notes, higher level of cash would definitely be a smart I mean, a significantly higher level of cash. Obviously, there's security concerns with that. So be smart. Don't talk about it. Um, uh, holding your gold, taking it out of vaults that could potentially be pressured by governments in case there were seizures and holding more of it at home. Again, that puts a security onus on you. We have to go back to where we are, our own defense mechanism, our own food provision mechanism, and our own energy provision. The more reliant, self-reliant you are, the less likely you will be a forced seller to get those things that you are already reliant on. Um, So those would be the preparations. I think we will have a lot of people that are paper wealthy that become forced sellers at the bottom. And I also feel the likes of BlackRock and Vanguard will be gobbling up assets, properties. You could have a spike in interest rates, a big warning for people that are over leveraged. Um, You know, I love America. I love visiting. I love Americans. They've always treated me very, very well. Um, but I mean, I drove around there. There's four trucks with 72 month uh, plans. My father paid his house off faster than that. And that's with a balloon payment at the end. So you're buying 60% of the car over, you know, it's something around the uh, six years. These things are going to kill you. Those are debt. But those are the poison pills that are inserted by our system in you, much like the economic hitman that went around to Ecuador and Panama and tried to get them indebted, all of that. You have your own personal poison pills that have been indebted in you, that tempting buy now, pay later uh, scenario. Uh, you should be aim to be debt free. Debt is a weapon against you as well With when there is a price like interest rates. Even if you have fixed Even if you have a home and you said, but mine is fixed, you're probably, if you look through the clauses, if things got so extreme, there might be some form of opt out, renege, we have to reset, no one saw this happen, you have to pay the X, Y, Z, and you know, you you don't have time to fight a lawsuit, but, but, but my terms and conditions. So getting banks out of your life or debt with a price related is a very important concept for surviving this collapse and going to it. If you survive the earthquake that I feel is coming, you are going to be on the next plane because I think you're going to be surrounded by very few. And wealth is a a relative thing. And that's where we have to then be leaders now. And we have to try to save as many people now. It's almost, I feel like Noah preaching the flood here and rowing out an ark. Um, But in some senses, we are all that. Let's be leaders. Let's seize. Taking action deals with any form of mental cognizance or depression go about setting, doing these things. It is positive and certainly get hold of that uh, physical and don't be concerned about the paper price as it spills or whether you're nailing it to the T because the long run, the long run is I suspect those are going to be absolute foundational, transgenerational, foundational wealth constructs that you are laying down. Transgenerational. You will be making decisions that will keep your children and your children's children in butter uh, and educated and smart by doing those things today uh, and seeing through the deception of the nature of our current markets. All right. Well, Francis, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your wisdom with us today. Where can our viewers find you online if they're interested in learning more? And did you have any last thoughts for our viewers? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for that. The marketsniper.com. We have a community of people that are preparing for a financial reset. There's more than just buying gold in that. Um, there's actually wealth building opportunities in the trading markets. We've been very dominant on the dollar strength, which is something we felt would happen. Um, but my last thoughts are psychological and social. Uh, take action. Um, be, take positive action. Listen to what I've said. Eradicate the poison pills. It's like detoxifying your body. Prepare for an obstacle course. Um, and if you uh, work as a team, uh, pull your your friends and colleagues over. It's time for community. It's time for, time for local Uh, getting to know your local friends and working together, your farmers, all of those things. Treat it as a project and it can be exciting and you can come out as a great man and a leader. Hard times build leaders. 
So don't, don't, don't ask for a soft life and an easy life. This is the opportunity to show you all. It's character building stuff. Grasp the, the, you know, grasp the opportunity and say, let's clear this obstacle course. Take your family with you on this journey and you're going to come out just strong. Thank you for having me on. And we'll see those that want to join our community at themarketsniper.com where you'll book a call with one of our uh, guys. Fantastic. Francis, once again, thank you so much for your time and God bless. Same to you. Thank you for having me on, Elijah. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we will let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be double boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Elijah, my brother Kaiser, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.